Happy April 26th. Happy uh, day after Parental Alienation Day. Um, <clears throat> I shared a lot of information online yesterday. Posted my first video um, of myself speaking. And uh, unscripted, unedited, unprepared. <laughs> and uh, didn't say everything I wanted to say or as concisely as I wanted to say it, but I think the key in the message is um, is to be vulnerable and raw and real. And uh, I mentioned yesterday that you know I'm pretty strong, <clears throat> and I really have been. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't feel the pain and the struggle. Uh, I think just that coping mechanism, you know, and I, I can understand where that would be beneficial potentially from, for, for Hannah, um, the not that, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, you know, forming a, a scab, you know, it kind of allows it to heal a little bit, but it's never, it's never fully healed. It's a void that can't be replaced, you know. So today, actually, I feel really more heavy energy, and um, there's a little girl running right now. She's about to go in the playground with her mom. Um, <clears throat> I went in. I uh, today is a year from the very last time that I, I, my family and I saw Hannah. So last year after Bubbles a Love Day, which was uh, April 25th, right? It was a Saturday at, in Sacramento. My family and I went to Hannah's church where her dad's on the vestry. You know, he's an, he's a, he's an usher there and um, Hannah's on the, uh, she's an acolyte at the church. And so it's something that, you know, we know, <clears throat> we always know that we can go to the church, that I, I can go to the church to see, to see my daughter, to know she's okay. And at that point it had been, so last year, April 26th, was the first time I had seen her in person since her high school graduation, which was in May um, of 2014. So that equates to like once a year, you know, within. So today it makes it a whole year since since I've seen Hannah. Um, so we went to church last year and um, the message of the pastor was really good. It was about love and forgiveness and family and unity. And what would Jesus do? He wouldn't. Uh, just turn his back on people he would embrace the outcasts you know the church that they go to is is really a progressive church um, even though it is Episcopalian um, you know it has the same the, all the the culture and tradition um, similar to Catholic Church but much more open-minded so uh, it was actually a healing session that day so I decided to go up and, and get, receive a healing I went and knelt in front of the altar and uh, Hannah, of course, was up there because she's an acolyte. So I saw that uh, that she had seen me, but she was looking at her friend and avoiding looking at me. So I knelt down at her church with, you know, her pastor giving me a blessing and a healing. And, and my own daughter, who I haven't seen in nearly a year, is just beyond the... The, the little fence, the little gate as I'm kneeling down and, and you know, I'm silent. I just go up there and get the healing and, um, you know, as an alienated parent, I'm sure all of you, or even if you're not an alienated parent, can you imagine if you hadn't seen your child in nearly a year, the restraint that it might take to go To know the only place you can really see your child is in church and then to go there and to not and to have you know your your child like turn her back on you what she must be going through you know I'm not trying to make her uncomfortable in her safe space as she said or her you know the sacred space of the church but 
on the flip side of that, you know, in regard to her father and stepmom, how, how can you be so hateful to hate me inside the, the house of God? How can you not be forgiving? How can you not understand that Hannah needs her mom? It's, it's, it's just pure hypocrisy, you know. So I kneel down, I get my blessing, I go back to my, uh, my pew. And so this is actually, this is a message I've been wanting to get out there for a while. Um, I'm not really, you know, uh, it was a very painful day. And I think somehow I, I just, uh, it was a painful day. And I think those feelings are coming back up for me right now this morning so so I go back to my pew after I get the healing and my family's there I look look at the front and I see that Hannah has uh, like exited stage left she walked off the, the altar and so I went into the courtyard with my mom I had my mom go with me and um, Sure enough, Hannah, you know, a little bit later, we see there's one of their friends, one of uh, Hannah's dad and stepmom's friends, a member of the congregation, is standing in the middle of the courtyard, and out comes Hannah, you know, disrobed from her altar, her acolyte wear, and she's um, basically meeting this person in the courtyard, and they, you know, had it. They, they had some kind of a predetermined escape plan, and there goes my daughter. You know, who's 18 at that point, and so um, I kind of, I was a distance away at the back of the courtyard, but I kind of walked to catch up as she was walking out of the the courtyard onto the sidewalk. I still wasn't, you know, I was. I probably didn't get much closer than between here and that tree to her. Um, so I walked up that close <clears throat> and as she's opening the car door to, of the escape getaway car from evil, mean me, what am I going to do? Um, anyway, she opens the door and I called her name. I said, Hannah, and she stopped, turned and looked at me. And the only thing that I could think to say to her was this. I just said, I love you. And she turned her head away and she got in the car and closed the door. And I can imagine, um, I can just tell you the, the pain that I saw that she must be in from me being there, telling her I love her. Uh, what would that be like to be a child and have to do that? <clears throat> and she's not a child, she's 18, okay. <laughs> but she's my child, she'll always be mine and her father's child, she's our child. And um, even though she's now 19 and she's a young adult and she can make her own decisions that's what everybody says she'll she can make her own decision she's 18 you know and 19 now and that's true she has her own mind she has her own brain um, unfortunately it's been filled with a lot of poison and hatred and wrong stories she's never heard my side of the story because I never told her you know she has this impression of me and uh, but if she erases if she, if she can if she can put aside some of the, the things that have been told to her and remember actually how much I was there for her if she if she understood I uh, remembered all the good times we had um, but I feel like uh, well if, if she could do that I mean that would be awesome but I, I feel like for her like she has to hold on to the the negative to justify her reasoning for not wanting me in her life not being able to have me in her life because oh I, I can almost guarantee you that if she had me in her life you know her dad would threaten to not pay her college like you know threaten to not bother coming home like he did and that's the kind of manipulation she's you know it's not it's not just him it's also his wife you know she's 
taken over. Um, she actually had said to me in January, before I went back to court to try to enforce the court order, uh, Hannah's stepmom had said to me in January, said, you know, legally, at, at a school function, um, legally Hannah's our, my daughter, you know. I said, no, she's not. Uh, and it took every restraint in me right then, like, wow, that's crossing a line. Um, but I didn't yell at her. I didn't cuss at her. I didn't hit her. There, you know, I, I kept it in, but I was, I was, to tell another mother that legally the child, that they didn't adopt her. She didn't, that she, Hannah wasn't up for adoption. I didn't give up my parental rights. I was, Hannah was being kept for me during that time. She wasn't allowed to spend time with me. Anyway, so happy day after Parental Alienation Day. I think I'm going to go back to work. My boss was nice enough to say, hey, Christy, what's going on? Go take a walk. So, um, yeah, this is me looking about as um, raw and vulnerable and, you know, dark circles and not in a good space. But I want to share that with you that um, this is what we go through, you know? We go through, we go through cycles of, of being strong and then being weak and it's the times that, that we're weak and that we share and we are vulnerable that and, and that we're able to, to express ourselves. Um, that we can then build ourselves back up to be stronger. So anyway, I love you. Uh, Hannah, if you do see this, I love you and I miss you. And I hope, I look forward to the day that all of this is, is just a distant memory. I hope, I hope that day comes. Anyway, all right. Good luck to all of you alienated families and parents out there.